Now, I wanted to do this video on magnesium because it relates to another topic that I'm studying now on chlorophyll, which is the green stuff or the blood of the plant. When a plant is deficient in chlorophyll, the leaves turn yellow. And one cause of that is a magnesium deficiency. Chlorophyll being the blood of the plant is similar in chemistry to our own blood. Yet we have iron to make it red. Plants have magnesium to make the leaves green. So we can have chlorosis in plants, which could be a magnesium deficiency, as well as chlorosis in humans, which is anemia where a person can actually look a little green. And magnesium is a very, very important mineral. It's in hard water. Okay. You have calcium and magnesium. It's in a very absorbable form. It's in bicarbonate. Okay. When you heat water, um, those bicarbonates turn into a carbonate form, which makes them absorb less in our bodies. And you would see it when you make your tea, when you heat your uh, water, you'll see these white little specks at the bottom of the pot. So our bodies do absorb these uh, bicarbonates uh, very easily. So hard water, mineral water, great source of magnesium, as well as calcium. And of course, when you soften the water, you take out these minerals. So there's some real interesting studies that show that hard water is actually very, very good for your cardiovascular system and soft water is not. Now, one little side note about um, that condition called chlorosis in plants. One way to develop this condition is to overwater the plants because all these minerals can leach out. Same thing happens when we drink too much water, especially without minerals. We dilute the minerals we have in our body and that creates all sorts of issues with our heart, with our nerves and muscles. However, if, you, if you're not drinking hard water or uh, mineral water, get your magnesium from leafy greens. Of course, uh, an average person only consumes like one and a half cups of vegetables per day, but you definitely wanna beef that up. I wanna talk about some very um, surprising symptoms and unique benefits of magnesium, okay? Number one, magnesium relieves muscle tightness. We know that magnesium deficiencies will create cramps of the muscles, but if you have tight muscles, which is different than a cramped muscle, that can be a magnesium deficiency. Number two, magnesium is intimately involved in making ATP. That's the energy currency of the body. So your energy level is dependent on magnesium. If you don't have enough, you're going to be kind of tired all the time. All right, number three, magnesium helps vitamin D's bioavailability. You need magnesium to allow vitamin D to work. So if you're deficient in magnesium, you can take all this vitamin D and it doesn't seem to work. And as a side note, if you want a really good form of magnesium, um, I'm gonna put a link down below. As well as a good source of vitamin D with magnesium, I'll put that link down below too. All right, number four, magnesium prevents calcium from depositing in the wrong places in your body. So it works similar to vitamin K2. All right, number five, magnesium relieves migraines. Number six, having enough magnesium will support your friendly bacteria. If someone is magnesium deficient, like two thirds of the world's population, that can negatively affect the microbiome, the friendly bacteria. All right, number seven, with enough magnesium, you can avoid having pins and needles and numbness, that type of thing, either in your lips, your fingers, or the bottom of your feet, which is called paresthesia. And number eight, let's say your cortisol is high and that affects your sleep patterns. Magnesium can help. So magnesium is very important in the regulation of cortisol. So excessive cortisol symptoms could be a magnesium deficiency. This is why magnesium helps people with stress. And number nine, having enough magnesium will keep your parathyroid functioning at its optimum level. The parathyroid hormone helps to regulate calcium. So if you're low in calcium, the parathyroid hormone will increase to help elevate calcium. Well, guess what? If you're deficient in magnesium, the parathyroid hormone will also increase to help you retain more magnesium. So any symptoms where you have high parathyroid hormone could be a magnesium deficiency. All right. And so the question is, how do you become deficient in magnesium? Well, you don't eat enough leafy greens. Number one, fluoride consumption in tap water um, can create a magnesium deficiency. Fluoride medications can also do it. 
refined grains, refined sugars will create a deficiency. Low hydrochloric acid in your stomach can create a problem. Stress will do it. Being a diabetic can create a deficiency. And this is why magnesium is so important to stabilize your blood sugars. Alcohol can create a deficiency. And if you have a malabsorption of your gut, okay? Now, there's quite a few medications that can also create a deficiency of magnesium. Um, diuretics, PPIs or antacids, statins, antibiotics, as well as birth control pills. Now, if you haven't seen this video on magnesium, this is a very, very important one. Check it out. I put it right here.